Premiere Pro had some pretty cool features that they added to the timeline or the clips on the timeline that you're about to see, and I found them by accident, figured you didn't know about them. So while I was working, I decided to flip the camera on and make a video about it. Let's talk about these new features for 2024. Hey, you know what's going on? It's Robert Teagar. I'm back again with another video. Today, we are talking about the new timeline features that have been added into Premiere Pro. I use Premiere Pro and like a bunch of you people that have vanished over to DaVinci land and they added a bunch of new features that I thought were pretty cool. Like I mentioned in the intro, I found them completely by accident, but figured you guys would want to see them as much as I did. Let's hop on into Premiere and see exactly what's going on. So as I was working on another video that I'm set to release next week, I started to poke around and saw that not only did the colors of the clips change pretty significantly, they're now kind of in that uh, bold range where they were more pastel-y before. Um, but there's a couple other things that I literally clicked on by accident. And so the first thing I saw was in the audio area, we have these kind of like predetermined audio regions and I ended up clicking on it and this whole essential sound panel just pops up on the side. So I started to like do a little bit of research and try to figure out exactly what's going on here. This thing is actually a dialogue region, but it's utilizing AI to try and detect what type of audio source these particular clips are. And if they mess up and don't put a particular thing that's correct, you can actually go in here and correct what they are. That particular region is dialogue that's re-recorded in an audition through this mic right here. If you haven't checked out that whole setup, I got a video on it, you should check it out. So I can reassign it to dialogue. And what's pretty cool is now that it shows up as this dialogue, I click on essential sound and I can do a whole bunch of things to enhance whatever that audio is. I'm sure you guys know about all the new enhanced audio and especially the vocal processing that's going on in Adobe. It's pretty incredible stuff if you ask me. So it's buried inside of Premiere now. Go ahead and click around and utilize that function. It's pretty sweet. I then tried to figure out like, why is this panel still here? I usually go to like my Windows uh, workspaces, reset to a saved layout, but that's not it. You actually hit on this hamburger right here. You click close panel like you would in any other instance and boom, there you go, it's gone. The other thing I started to notice is that there's a little effects button right here. You can see on both audio and video clips, if you click on this effects, it's going to pull up the effect control window inside of your source view. That's pretty cool. You can see all the things that are going on there. But if you right click on it, it'll show you all the different effects that are there. You can even add effects from that particular little drop down right there. I thought that was pretty rad too. You can also do this by hitting control and click. It'll bring up the exact same sort of thing. If you have no effects on it, that'll exactly what it'll look like here along with the other essential views that come in with volume, panning, channel volume, all those sorts of things that pop up well. But that, my friends, is not my favorite stuff. My favorite thing is what happened to the audio fade handles. Ladies and germs, they start to mimic what an audio editing suite like Pro Tools or uh, what's the one that Apple makes? Logic. You can actually grab these little handles right here and start to fade audio. Maybe you can't see because it's a little bit small. This is actually another feature that they have. If you start to actually make the audio regions bigger, the waveforms expand appropriately to the size of what your audio regions are. Let's kind of make this a little bit easier to see. So as I'm expanding, you can see that the waveforms are getting bigger. As I'm enclosing them or making them smaller, the waveforms are getting smaller. It's all like intelligent stuff, but here, this is like ugh, chef's kiss. So happy that they did this. So now you see this little crossfade little handle right here. I can start to crossfade out wherever I want. This used to be a function that was exclusively dedicated to keyframes, which I can still do if I want to, right? If I hit my control or command key, I can add a keyframe here and then I can effectively do the same thing with the volume that's going on, provided of course that what I've selected in the effects window is volume. Uh, and then if I wanted to, I can right click on this keyframe, make it a Bezier handle and start to kind of smooth out that curve however I want it to be applied. Well, although that is incredibly accurate and effective, I much rather have the ability to add these little crossfade handles here and be able to apply it. Now, if I wanted to, actually, because that's not a crossfade, that's just a fade. If I wanted to crossfade, watch what I get to do here. I can actually just drag it the opposite direction 
and drag it across the other section and it cross fades my audio from two separate regions together. That's incredible. If I shift click, it'll only drag one side while leaving the other in place. I mean, this is pretty intuitive stuff. Granted, it's been in audio programs for quite a long time but it's now making its way into Premiere. And I'm uh, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty sure that this stuff was in Audition as well. I don't use Audition for crossfading as much as I probably should. Um, I use it just for recording and kind of sweetening audio and those sorts of things. But a lot of that functionality is now finding its way inside of Premiere. It's pretty darn cool. I really think that this is a pretty neat feature that we've got going on here. You can see if I'm hitting Command and moving it around, I get these options. I like Shift, like I said, it's moving back and forth. Man, that's cool. I mean, just, that's like, thanks Adobe. Thanks a lot. So those are some pretty cool new features in the Premiere Pro program. There's a uh, triple P there for you if you like alliteration. If you like the video, like the damn video. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for post notifications. If you're new here, welcome. I post content on a weekly basis on filmmaking tips and the business of being a creative. If this is something that you're into, kind of join the Tea Garden community. I think you'll find a neat little place. What are some other things inside of Premiere Pro's new update that you enjoy? Which one of these is your favorite? Are you going to be implementing it? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Peace.